welcome to our lesson on equity value and enterprise value. Now in this lesson, I'm not going to go over the basic definitions of equity value and enterprise value. You'll see down here that I have an example of the actual calculation for Coca-Cola. That's the company we're using in our example here. I'm not going to go over the basic definition. Instead, what I want to focus on is how equity value and enterprise value change when the company's financing method changes. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see this part up here at the top a little bit better. And really the key point of this lesson is that no matter how a company is financed, its enterprise value stays the same, but its equity value may change depending on the mix of equity, debt, and cash. What this means is that if you have a valuation multiple like enterprise value to EBITDA, well, that's not gonna change immediately after their financing mix changes even if it's significantly different, at least on a historical basis. One analogy that's often used to explain this concept is that let's say you buy a house for $500,000. Well, that house is worth $500,000 regardless of whether you pay for it with 100% cash or 50% cash, 50% debt, or 80% debt and 20% cash. It doesn't matter what the mix to finance your purchase is, all that matters is what the house is worth on an absolute basis. And it's really the same thing with companies as we'll see below. Now, this example, as I mentioned before, we're using Coca-Cola. If you're wondering where I got some of these numbers from in our basic calculations here for equity value and enterprise value, you can just follow the links on screen above or search for Coca-Cola investor relations. And what I've done to save us some time is I've already pulled in the number from their most recent balance sheet here. And I've gotten some of the numbers from their annual statements as well for the trailing 12 month numbers specifically. So you can go and get these yourself. If you're looking at this video at a later date, of course, these numbers will be different, but that is where all of them are coming from in the first place. And then one final note here, this lesson is really more about the concept and how to answer interview questions. So of course, if a company actually pays off debt or raises additional equity, the market is probably gonna have some type of reaction to that in the intermediate to long term. We're ignoring that here. We're saying strictly on an accounting basis, what happens, how does the company's balance sheet change after this, and how does that impact the equity value and enterprise value? So that's one thing to keep in mind here. Now, the basic definition, I'm not gonna go through in detail because we're not focused on it in this lesson, but essentially equity value, just the current share price times the shares outstanding can be diluted or basic. We're using diluted shares here. And then to get to enterprise value, essentially you are subtracting any cash like items. So anything that an acquirer of the company, a buyer of the company could take for themselves and use in the form of cash, we're subtracting those. And then we're adding in any types of debt or debt like obligations that cannot be paid out of a company's normal business operating cash flows. So in that category, a couple items would be debt, unfunded pension obligations, non-controlling interest, that's a bit of a different category. We're adding this back for comparability purposes, but we'll look at that in a later lesson. We're not really focused on this basic definition for now. In any case, we subtract those cash-like items, we add the debt-like items and other obligations to get to our enterprise value. I also have here some of Coca-Cola's financial data for revenue, EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, and net income. And I have some of the key multiples. So enterprise value to revenue, enterprise value to EBITDA, and then PE, so price to earnings, or equity value to net income. So the question now is, what happens? How does this change if Coca-Cola issues shares? What happens if they raise debt over here? And then what happens if they repurchase shares over here? And then finally, what happens if they repay some of their debt? So if they take some of that $35 billion worth of debt and repay, say, $10 billion worth of it. So let's go through these scenarios one by one. I'm gonna show you what happens with equity value, enterprise value, and multiples each time. So first off, what if they issue $10 billion worth of shares? Well, their equity goes up by 10 billion because it's the value of the shares they've issued. And then their cash also goes up by 10 billion. So what happens here? Well, our equity value goes up. You can see this highlighted in red, but our cash also goes up. And so what that means is that the enterprise value stays the same. So take a look at this. These two enterprise value based multiples, revenue and EBITDA, those stay the same. However, the historical PE multiple changes because our equity value is now different. So as you can see here, 
even if they issue shares, enterprise value stays the same because the market is not going to value a company more highly just because they have additional shares outstanding. The company is worth what it's worth based on its financial performance and the market's views of it and future expectations. It's not going to go up or down in value just because it happens to issue more shares or otherwise change its method of financing. So let's look at scenario number two now, which is what happens if it raises $10 billion worth of debt? What happens here? Well, our debt goes up by 10 billion. So I'm gonna enter that right there. And then our cash also goes up by 10 billion. Because remember, if you raise debt on the other side of the balance sheet, your cash goes up because you're getting cash from that debt you raised. What happens here? Well, our cash and cash equivalents go up by 10 billion once again. Our debt goes up by 10 billion as well. And those changes essentially cancel each other out. We're subtracting a greater negative, but we're also adding a greater positive to get to our enterprise value. And what happens again? Enterprise value stays the same. Equity value actually stays the same in this case as well, at least from an accounting perspective. And all of our valuation multiples stay the same in this case. So this is one case where neither equity value nor enterprise value actually change. Now, scenario number three here, what happens if Coca-Cola repurchases 10 billion worth of shares? So in this case, our cash balance is gonna go down because we're presumably using some cash to repurchase those shares. And our equity is also gonna go down because those shares no longer exist. They've been removed from the market. What happens here? Well, our equity changes by negative 10 billion. And then our cash also changes by negative 10 billion. And so what happens here is that our equity value goes down because we re repurchase those shares, but our enterprise value once again stays the same. Our enterprise value based multiples here also stay the same and the historical PE multiple changes because our equity value is now different. So that's what happens when we repurchase shares. Interestingly enough, in this scenario, even if we were to use debt to repurchase these shares, the same thing would happen. All that would happen is instead of cash decreasing by 10 billion, debt would increase by 10 billion. So let's plug in that scenario and see what happens here. And you can see it again, equity value goes down, but debt goes up. And as a result, our enterprise value stays the same, multiples stay the same, and the equity value based multiple PE changes. I'm gonna change this back for now. And then finally to scenario four, which is what happens when we repay 10 billion worth of debt. So I've grouped some of these columns so you can see this a little bit more effectively on screen. So when we repay $10 billion worth of debt, well, our debt is gonna decrease by 10 billion. And in a lot of cases, we'll pay for that with cash. So our cash is also going to decrease by 10 billion. So what happens in this case, our equity value stays the same because we're not changing our share count or number of shares or share price or anything like that. And then our enterprise value also stays the same because we are subtracting less of a negative in terms of the cash but we're also adding less debt because we repaid some of it. Our multiples all stay the same in this case. Now, even if we were to do this, even if we were to repay the debt by raising additional equity, same thing would happen. Let's take a look at this. Let's enter zero for cash, and then let's enter 10 billion worth of equity. So we raise equity, we issue shares to use to repay debt. And in this case, of course, our equity value goes up, but our debt goes down, and so our enterprise value stays the same, our enterprise value based multiples stay the same and our PE multiple changes. So bottom line, regardless of how we repay debt, how we finance it, our enterprise value and enterprise value based multiples are gonna stay the same no matter what happens there. So key takeaways from this, regardless of whether you raise debt or equity or you pay off debt or repurchase shares, enterprise value does not change and neither do the enterprise value based multiples such as enterprise value to revenue and EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Now, in the long term, or even in the intermediate term, by doing these things, you are sending signals to the market. The market may respond, and so the share price of the company may change, and as a result, enterprise value may indeed end up changing. But these scenarios are more about how to answer interview questions and about the basic concepts. Equity value and equity value base multiples will change often based on the financing differences and how you finance these types of changes, whether you use cash or equity or debt. And so this is really yet another reason why enterprise value and enterprise value based multiples are so important because it lets you evaluate a company on a capital structure neutral basis and say, regardless of how this company is funding itself, what is it worth?